You're listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast, coming to you from the kitchen studios located high atop the historic Raleigh Building, located in the heart of downtown Raleigh. The NCF&B Podcast takes you behind the scenes of North Carolina's food and beverage industry. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at NCFB Pod. This episode is sponsored in part by Food Scene. That's food, S-E-E-N, dot com. Providing professional photography, social media management, video production, and website design. That's Food Scene. And now, the sommeliers to the stars, the barbacks in your backyard. It is Max and Max. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. Max, are you sure that it's the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast? Are you- <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are, where are we going? <laughs> He's hosting too many podcasts these days. But uh, this podcast today, we are back focusing on food and beverage in the triangle specifically today, as we have the owner and team behind the Kitchen Archive in both Durham and Raleigh, the owner, Mr. Will Pettis. Hello. And his social media manager, Ms. Janae Wilkins. Hi. How's it going, everybody? Doing well. Doing Very well. well. Here. And, and starting this all off, you know, we, we kind of mentioned you in a previous episode featuring Andrew Ullum of Union Special, uh, Union Special Bread. And so it is Friday, and he is known to pop up. Pop up at uh, Videri Chocolates on Friday, so I had a little extra time to kill this morning and thought, let's get some of that product because uh, he probably baked it in your space. Sure did. And so, uh, so we do have uh, we have like an apple fritter thing going on. We got a croissant. We have a cookie that he gave me. He's like, eat this. He didn't try it before. <laughs> uh, and then Matt, this is like the crazy decadent. It's is a, that the chocolate filled croissant? The, it's the chocolate cookie dough, or it's the cookie dough uh, croissant. Wow. Uh, and then he gave me some uh, in- insider tip, Ooh. starting it off right here, Mr. Will Pettis. Uh, notice there's no chocolate on this table. It mm. is known that I do not like chocolate. <laughs> Correct. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the Look at thing that. Ever. How do you not eat chocolate? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, so Vidari Chocolate, Sam Ratto, he's dead to you. He's dead. Yeah. Dead. I don't eat any of Andrew's pastries with uh, chocolate in it. He knows that. I uh, prefer the plain croissants, but shout out to you, Andrew. Is that just like a I like to be different type of thing, or you literally have tried chocolate, tried to like it, and you just don't? Um, it's just, I, it's not something that I won't eat if it's in some things, mm-hmm. uh, chocolate chip cookies, whatever. It, just plain chocolate's just never been my thing. Okay. My my brother-in-law is the same way. Like, he doesn't, it, everybody always has to order, a, you know, if you order desserts when you go out to dinner, and it's like, oh, let's get one of these, one of these, and it's like, we always have to make sure we get a Ugh. non-chocolate dessert. And my brother's you know? the exact same way. Yeah. I'm not sure why. It's <laughs> weird, weird, weird. This is hot chocolate talk, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's get into the Kitchen Archive and what All you're right. doing. Uh, so for everybody just to understand, the Kitchen Archive, for one, you have two locations. You're in Durham and you're in Raleigh. Correct. And uh, put it in your words. I don't want to tell people what you do. I'd rather have you tell them, what do you do? Okay, so the Kitchen Archive is a large commercial space that, whether you be a food truck, a caterer, a baker, um any kind of mass production candlestick maker. candlestick maker. We have people who do avocado oil. Um, so anything that you need to mass produce that one, if you're Department of Health, you can't do it at home anyway. So you have to have a commercial kitchen. Or if you've just outgrown Department of Ag, some people bake at home. Eventually, you come home and your kitchen's a mess. <laughs> your kitchen is your workplace, and someone doesn't like it. So um, we provide space and cooking equipment, refrigeration, storage, uh, dishwashing, all the above from for anybody who needs a commercial kitchen. And your background is in cooking? or Absolutely what? not. Okay. <laughs> um, Interesting. I was born and raised in Durham. Um, spent most of my early years in Durham. Went to Greensboro to go to high school at a military school. Okay. Uh, Oak Ridge Military. Um, after high school... I decided not to go to college, uh, just got some odd and end jobs, and then in 2009, kind of when the food truck craze came about, uh, we started the Will and Pops Food Trucks, which I used to be the owner of. Mm-hmm. Uh, started that in 2009. Did you do that with your pops? Uh, yeah, so me and my dad started them together. Just guessing. Good <laughs> guess. A good, really good guess. Yeah. And then in 2011, I got into some trouble, and I had to uh, go on a 
nice long vacation for a couple years. <laughs> You did not uh, enlist it, into the military, is what you're saying. You're um, no, I was forced to go on vacation, not by <laughs> choice. Heard. Yes. Um, so yeah, I was incarcerated for two years for um, marijuana charges. Uh, long story. So after I got out of jail, I realized that, hey, if I can sell thousands of cheeseburgers or sell thousands of pounds of marijuana, then I could probably sell anything else. Mm. So got back into the food truck. My dad quit. Um, I took the one truck, bought a second one, ran those for a couple of years, uh, and then just sold those of February of this year to someone else who owns another food truck. Interesting. And and so you were making burgers? Is that what? Uh, yeah. So we did burgers and fries uh, for about eight and a half years. And this just, like Matt said, like you didn't have like a culinary background, but you had to figure out. Something. I mean, obviously, yes, everyone knows how to make a hamburger, but it's pretty bold to say I'm going to professionally make a hamburger. And, uh, and and go out there and compete. Correct. Uh, where did so, that, that chutzpah come from? Well, when we nice. first started, we were one of the very few on the scene that were in this category of the gourmet food trucks. I mean, the taco trucks have been around forever. The lunch trucks have been in the construction sites for forever. Uh, so we were one of the first ones on the scene, and we really, a uh, few of us, Cherba, Humble Pig, we, we set the, the bar for and opened up a bunch of doors for all the thousands of food trucks that are around now. Um, and then I slowly was, as that market got saturated, I moved to the industry I'm in now, right. um, trying to basically solve an issue that Durham had no commissaries. Um, we, I, I was using one that was an old restaurant, and then Raleigh definitely had none. We, they had, there's a few smaller ones, um, but it was just a market that was needed, so we kind of just grabbed the market quickly. Yeah, and so t- to help explain to some people that might not know, and I'm saying this because I didn't know, so I assume maybe a couple other people might be like me, uh, the food trucks, not all the food just created all on the, on the truck. It's not like, okay, we wake up in the morning, we drive our truck somewhere, and we just cook. You have a prep kitchen. You Correct. go somewhere, a commercial prep kitchen, and that's effectively what you offer to everybody, where they can make their sauces, where they can uh, brine something if yep. they need to, or uh, bake, if you, if you will, and do all that. And then they bring those semi-prepped products onto yep. the truck and then go to market. Well, Absolutely. I saw that movie Chef with John Favreau, and yeah. that is not what happened. They <laughs> prepped everything on the food well, truck. Well, it, it depends on where you go. So if you go to California, if you go to Florida, if you go to New York, it is that way. So the trucks are built so they can stand alone. So they can hmm. – they can, and you can do that here in North Carolina, but it's just what you need in that truck is – it's hard to fit everything in there and make it – depends on how much food you're producing. If you're producing a ton of food – getting it prepped on the truck and it it's just doesn't work so by law in north carolina you have to have a commissary right yeah. to, and also to store things correct properly store right? your food dump your yeah. gray water off your truck get your fresh water dump your grease all these things so i mean you can't just dump it in the street do you also have catering but you also have catering people that work out of your correct. kitchen because they they grow too big and don't have a space so they make it out there same thing sense. if you have a wedding for 300 people it's like where does the food come from mm. <laughs> so most of it's produced at our place uh, a lot of the caterers, some of the caterers will produce some of it on site, but the majority of the catering is done. In your kitchen. Yeah, along with prepackaged meals. Uh, we have a couple companies that do the, you buy your wheels, meals weekly, already pre-made. Um, so it's a little mix of everything. Right. And so what was the moment that you thought, like, I, I, don't, I didn't hear, like, I always am after the aha moment of, oh, this is a need. Let's do this. Let's let's sign the lease. Let's get a, get a space. What, how did that come about? So when I had my food truck, I was renting space from a place in East Durham that was just bad. It was it was not good. Like dirty, dirty expensive, bad area. Bad area. It, was just, it, it wasn't what we needed for to produce our food properly and to carry on our business to grow as we wanted to. So I went and um, purchased an old Boston Market restaurant oh. on the other side of Durham by South Square. Uh, used it for my commissary, just was eliminating the and was running to other people. Mm-hmm. And then people just started popping up here and there. Lots of people showing up. So I yeah. said, hey, let's just build a big one. And so sense. we built the big one in Durham, and it was full in nine days, <clears throat> like immediately. Wow. 44 trucks. just 44 people. Yep. And you're like, oh, this is a good so, business. Let's do this again. So yeah. we can Wake County. And there's one, uh, another one in Wake County, but they don't really have any cooking equipment. Okay. So it's really directed straight towards food trucks for storage. Um, so, yeah, we came to Wake County and built this monstrosity down here on Wilmington Street, and it's just been wild ever since. When you say cooking equipment, meaning are you, you're supplying stoves? Correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you supply other fancy stuff like for um, not so much so we have stoves uh burners on top of the stoves obviously flat top uh convection oven dishwashers uh deep fryers sinks. 
We don't do any deep fryers just because they're a mess. Okay. And most of the food trucks have their own. Okay. Um, and but, you wouldn't want to – you don't prep anything – that would be deep fried and then put on a truck and yeah, go somewhere. You'd, you'd well, well okay. when Thomas Carr did his uh, French fries, <laughs> don't they deep fry them first, then freeze them, and then f- like yeah, fry- that's how we did ours. Yeah, we'd blanch yeah. them first and then. But he does like he does flash fry them to serve. To yeah. serve, but he does deep fry them yes. before. Thanks for shitting on my point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to be on point. Um, so, so yeah, we have a lot of, um, and then a lot of people bring their own specialty equipment. Andrew has his sheeter and his uh, mixers and. So it's 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 geared to the very minimum to get you started for a food truck, all the way up to people like Andrew, who, yeah. who have the private kitchens, and they've gotten to. And now he's about to outgrow that private kitchen. I mean, he's opened his restaurant in May, and yeah, he'll probably outgrow that as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great. We're looking at pictures of it right now of of the space, and it's just it's cool. It looks like. I mean, it looks like a laboratory or something. <laughs> it's like there's there's just huge working spaces, uh, so much to to give. And and the nice part is, is you're like uh, we were talking about it last night uh, at dinner. It's like you're almost like a, an art studio where it's like you know you're you're providing everyone with pencils and 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 acrylics and canvases, and then it's just like go sick, go Correct. go make what you can make. Uh, but in the culinary world, yeah. so it, it's it's a pretty sweet, uh, pretty cool gig, if you will, um, and. And it's it's you're like a, you're helping to create like a like an incubator for for right. what we love to talk about you know so uh, who who's somebody that uh, obviously we are the aforementioned union special uh, but who's somebody else that we know that like has come out of your your kitchens that we might uh, so Manhattan Cafe oh yeah they have their Manhattan restaurant Street. here they do all their catering out of our place um, it'd be hard to produce all that out of that small kitchen. Uh, let's see, the Bowles food truck, they're pretty popular. They're hopefully moving to brick and mortar soon. Um, you guys know Union Social. Uh, oh, Emma Foods, uh, Kim yeah. Hunter works Emma with Foods, you, right? Yeah, Kim, Kim Hunter's there as well. She was a formerly of Kimbop and then now has yep. switched her business to a food truck. And I just worked with her over the weekend for a uh, Chicken Wire event. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, we're, we're quite a bit different than most in this industry, most people who have commissaries as well. So... By the health code, it's separation of time or space, one or the other. So you can take a 100-square-foot room, put one table in it, and rent it by the hour Mm -hmm. to a 1,000 different people. Mm -hmm. We're the only one that has separation by space, which means once you have your station, it's dedicated to you, it's yours 24-7. You can come whenever you want to, as much as you want to, as little as you want to. And that's the only way you do it. So you have your space. for, And how does that work? Like you get It's monthly. Got it. So we do a one-year lease. Um... You pay it the first of the month. It's basically so it eliminates the people who one want to work on their own time. Mm-hmm. You may have kids. You may have, and it also eliminates the fact that if you call me today and wanted me to come cater or whatever, I have that space always available to me. Right. So I don't turn down business. And the reason why I did that because I own food trucks. Mm-hmm. And it was a pain in the butt for me having to schedule time every day. And I was like, oh, there's got to be a better way to do this. So this is why we took this huge building. And just made a space for every person. Cool. Do you find a lot of uh, collaboration there, or think tanking things like between different businesses? Uh, definitely. We so th- we have a WhatsApp group. There's a couple actually. Um, one has all the food trucks in the whole area. There's like 300 something food trucks in it. And then we have some for each of our buildings. They guys work together. They pass events along. Um, some of the food trucks may sell the baker's product. So one of the food trucks may sell Andrew's product. Right on. From his food truck out in the street or whatever. So. There's a lot of mix between the different companies, the different food trucks, the different caterers, the bakers, um, to help each other push their product. Because Andrew can't go out down the street serving. Yeah. Um, so he may want to partner with food trucks to get it out there. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I like that. And I know, Max, you're a big fan of that collaboration because uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of the whole point about the Kitchen Rally. Our, our, not the Kitchen Archive, but the Kitchen, our mm-hmm. offices here, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is Copy all different. Permitted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the food, different uh, food businesses kind of collaborating and networking. and Yeah, we try not to step on each other's toes in a, in a business sense and just uh, help each other out. So it's like whenever we need, I'm like, oh, I need a graphic for like this thing. <laughs> oh, hey, Mike Rosado of MRC, I know you love doing free work for me. <laughs> Would you please do this? He's like, anything for you. Well, we did but, put him on the microphone. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, he's a superstar. He's a now. celebrity. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's a really cool. Um, yeah, uh, the collaborations are great. Um, I wanted to ask. So uh, let's get let's get technical about some okay. cool stuff because I love like talking about horsepower and like what we're doing in the kitchen, bro. Um, but your kitchens, 
I mean, just from the pictures and also knowing uh, the people that you work that work with you, uh, it's a pretty cool and up the like, state of the art type of uh, facility, right? So you have. I mean, if, like these massive, <laughs> these Walking massive water, water heaters. heaters. <laughs> like I've never seen that many water heaters all at one spot. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but designing a kitchen is 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 a, a kind of an art form in itself. And so, how did you know what to bring in, and why did you bring in some of these products? And like, how'd you build out your kitchen? Um, so it's been a learning curve since the very first one when I had the Boston Market. It was it was I built the bot or set the Boston Market up to suit me. Mm-hmm. As a food truck owner, and then as we brought more people in, it's what do you need to, and to make your business better, to help you grow better. So as we b- built the first one, and then we went to Durham, built that one, and this one, they can gradually get better. They gradually get more appealing to people. Some Raleigh may have something Durham doesn't have. Um, so I just try to learn over each each building by listening to my tenants and listening to the people that I hang out with who have food trucks. So what's going to make this a better situation for you? Because I won't be the only person in this game forever. Uh, People are going to repeat the process. People are going to repeat what we do. So it's what can we do to our facility to make it where when someone does come, you don't want to leave? What what makes us better than everybody else? So I continue to grow as we build them. And as I build the next one, which we have one going in RTP, uh, January 1st. Whoa, oh, you heard it, it here first. <laughs> is that common knowledge? Nope. No. Um, so. Can I just say how awesome that is and what a testament to our food scene yes. in the triangle that there is a need for three huge commissary kitchens between oh, man, Durham, Raleigh, and RTP right in the middle? There's over, there's about 400 food trucks between Raleigh, Durham, Cary, Chapel Hill, this area. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, and they're popping up every day. And uh, did you ever think that you would be a landlord? No. Nope. Sure right, like that's sure essentially didn't. who you are now. You're, you're like, uh, yep. you're like walking around in a three piece suit, and a big cigar. <laughs> you know, no, not yet. You never wear it, the three piece suit. No, guys. no, no. It, <laughs> never. I'm, I'm there every day. I, I'm literally seven days a week. I'm there, um, whether it be mopping floors, fixing stuff, talking to people. Um, so. Do you ever get in the food trucks ever? Like, do you ever like? Not anymore. Like, no, no one's like, hey, bro, I need <laughs> someone to uh, work saute right no, now. No, no. Um, I had a n- nine years of it was it was a lot, man. Yeah. It was yeah. Seven days a week, hundred hours a week. That that's the only way to make it in the food truck business. You can you can work a normal schedule, pay your bills, do decent. But the only way to make it to where you're actually making some pretty decent money is to work seven days a week. Yeah, with 400 others uh, out there competing, I would Correct. imagine so. Yeah. Do you does the kitchen archive provide any uh, labor like? Could you come in there and say, hey, I need some help prep cooks, or I need like, – do you have that as well, uh, people like people that are on every, staff? I don't have any, but people ask all day long, every day, do you know anybody who's hiring, or do you know anybody who needs work, needs yeah. work? And it's, I don't know why it's so hard to find quality people. I mean, these people are paying good rates. They're paying 14 15 16 bucks an hour to work on these food trucks, and I know it's hard work. It's yeah. hot. It's cold. It's mm-hmm. smoky. It's, it's a lot of hours, but, man, there's certainly plenty of work in this industry if – I, I, it. It's so funny. It's the one universal thing that in this business, whether I'm out selling wine or we're talking to people on the pod, it's yep. always people who need uh, help in the kitchen. And I'll never forget when I first came down here, uh, it was like Max's birthday, and I came to give him a bottle of booze at the restaurant. And I walked, and I'm like, oh, what are you doing, dude? And he was like prepping <laughs> stuff on Gar Manger. He's like, I got nobody in the kitchen, so I'm on Gar Manger. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. But that's the universal thing that uh, nobody has kitchen help. And so I think we need Laura, ha- Laura Harris to provide more housing for oh. yeah, for – yeah. culinary people so that we can have more people in this area to staff the restaurants. Yeah. So Laura Harris is a, a, an amazing sponsor of our podcast, but she's also a restaurant industry preferred uh, agent. Okay. And so she works much like you in the food and beverage industry, but not necessarily providing food or beverage, but a service yeah. to help those in the community. And what she's trying to do is help you get a new home and she can buy houses and she sells houses. Uh, and of course, anyone could call her and, and she could be your agent. But uh, but because of her, her experience in the kitchen uh, or in the restaurant industry for so long, she kind of gravitates to that industry in itself. So um, And she eliminates your hassle, all the hassles. Your, she yeah, makes it really concise right. process. Like Will, you just said, 
the only way to really make any money in this thing is to work seven days a week. So if you needed to find a place to live or buy, like, <laughs> yeah, how right. would you do that? And so that's that's and she gets that. She's like, okay, you go work your food truck, do all this stuff, whatever. I will set you up with virtual tours. Uh, I'll send you as much online stuff, and you give me as much information as you can. I will find the place for you, and uh, and then hopefully you get like an afternoon for free and go see your new home, you know, and and get it like that. So go out. Uh, contact if you're looking for a place. Contact Laura Harris at 919-896-2697. Or what's the website, Matt? NCFBHomes.com. Uh, Powered <laughs> by Fathom Realty. Yes. Um, Nailed it. Uh, we're so proud of ourselves when we do a spot. We're, like, yeah. we're actually really uh, 125 episodes later. Can uh, read weird. an ad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, for this new segment... Um, I want to get into you have you have this uh, insider industry knowledge of food trucks, and I actually just had a a meaningful conversation with somebody in a food truck uh, about the industry, and you know, trying to find their place in this industry, trying to find enough mouths to feed, and trying to you know find a good spot. It's like a fishing hole, you know, you got to go where the fish are, and you got to find your place, and uh, it can be discouraging, and it also because there's so many food trucks. It, it it's now you've you've kind of uh, muddied the waters a little bit and it's become a little bit more challenging to make a dollar. Um, funny though, you know, both Matt and I have spent many years in Los Angeles and many can argue that the food truck kind of revolution mm-hmm. was born out of Venice, California. And so I said to this person, I was like, you know. I get that food trucks now have become like an industry in itself, and it's like we're very organized. There are apps and scheduling, and you know, you you connect, you do all these things. I go, but <clears throat> food trucks were not designed so that you could be in a fucking system. Like right. most of the guys, the gals that were running food trucks back in Venice at that time, were like, I can't stand being in a restaurant anymore. I don't want to do the nine to five. I want to be free. I want to do my own thing. I mean, much like the movie, right? Like John yeah. Favreau, yeah. which is a good movie. I will give you. I like that movie, the Chef. That's a cool movie. Except for the most ridiculous. Janae, you can you can speak to the. <laughs> He he. His son sends out a tweet, and then they just have like ten thousand yeah, people right. waiting oh for God. it. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. That's surely what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I would love. Uh, so I was giving advice, and I said, "Look, I don't know how you do this, but I would be in the mindset of thinking back to the initial idea of why a food truck existed, and break." the fucking rules Mm -hmm. and don't do all the things that you're supposed to do you know maybe don't play nice maybe pop up at the corner right across the street from the uh, from a bunch of people that said you're not supposed to go there so what sue me and and if you have really good food then cream rises right like if the good will be will be there oh i so knew who you're talking about but i'm not gonna say it (laughs) so i would love to know by somebody that is has been in the industry and now you see it from from deep inside the industry like how does how does it work and and, and, and is it what, the way I'm picturing it or painting it that now it's kind of become like a a box that you must fit inside of? Yes. So you kind of just read the back of my mind. Literally, if you'd asked me that question, I'd give you the same responses. Um, so when I first started, that was my thought on the whole thing. My thought was, I'm going to pull up here. I got kicked out of Chapel Hill, Franklin Street, a bajillion times. I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> 2010, I got kicked off Franklin Street. Right. So and the worst thing, thing to happen, they take the You weed. were selling yeah. weed at the time. So let's yeah, right? Yeah, who cared? <laughs> um, it's a great so, spot, I'm sure, by the way, to sell some weed. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen? Thing. They tell you to leave? You're permitted. You're not doing anything illegal. Right. Well, maybe slightly. Um, a car can park there. Why can't you? Right. So my thought behind the whole thing was, we're going to do what we want to do. We we got into this business. Um, I say we as me and my employees, whatever. Yeah. So we got into this so we could do what we want to do. Um, if we wanted to pull up on Fayetteville Street and serve tonight, we're going to do it. And mm-hmm. we may tell us to leave, so whatever. We'll go down to Hargate and park on that corner and try right. that corner. So that's how I started. Once again, Franklin Street was my – the Carborough Chapel Hill is where I was in, the area I was in. And I just parked places. I didn't really care. And so now it's gotten to where everything is so scheduled. Everybody wants to be under the FUSI and the food truck finder and the – I was never part of that as Will and Pops. I was never part of these associations. I was like, I'm going to do me, and I'm going to go serve my food, and y'all worry about y'all because Mm -hmm. your restaurant doesn't care what his restaurant's doing. Y'all don't partner together to – that's – Right. So I was always on the mindset, and now it's people have heaters in their trucks. They have air conditioners. They have self-leveling blocks. Man, we use the curb. 
<laughs> it, it, I'm, I've served leaning like this. I mean, it's that, that's the beauty of a food truck is... A hobo's foot. Correct, yeah. And if, and if no one shows up, you just leave. You, you just buy. Yeah. And, and the same go. thing goes with these locations where these lunches that are scheduled by the property managers. And so all the RTP offices are scheduled by the property managers where sure. they schedule a food truck every day of the week for these clients. Um, so it's, it's getting now where... It's so competitive, one. Two people aren't showing up, so they're making a bad rap for everybody else. Mm. And there are certain food truck owners who are trying to get everybody under this 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 group to where we all work as one, to where we all, yes, power's in numbers, but at the end of the day, if your food sucks <laughs> and if your truck is disgusting and your staff look crazy, and you're going to fail. It's what it is. Right. So, well, and there will be. A guy making burgers Absolutely. in this truck, and then another guy making burgers in that right truck. Right beside me. So why, like, you, you can't play too nice, no. and it is a competitive industry, but I'm going to throw even more gas on this fire, because I was a restaurant guy for the longest time. I actually didn't really like food trucks for the reason of, we're in a shopping center, mm-hmm. right? And the property manager systematically thought, okay, we're going to put a, a, a clothing store right here, we're going to put a... a a, a breakfast place here, you know, uh, whatever, retail here, and then a dinner place here. I've got it all perfect. It's it's a perfectly designed shopping center for the amount of parking spots I have and all these things. Oh, now there's a goddamn tamale truck right here that's siphoning off all the business that w- should have gone to that, that brick-and-mortar restaurant who's paying a ton of money in taxes and rent. So... Like, for me, running in the restaurant, I'm like, dude, get the F out of here with your goddamn food trucks. Like, stop stealing our business. What say you? So m- my defense to that one would be, one, if you, if you and your wife get in your car and say, hey, we're going to your restaurant tonight, and you pull up and there's a food truck there, are you going to stop and say, hmm, let's think. <laughs> right. Food truck, or if, if they're going to that restaurant, they're going regardless. And my other thought on that is, which happened lots, I had a burger truck. Burger trucks would pull up beside me. I'd have a line around the street. And they would come over and look at me like I'm crazy. Why are you worried about me? Get your product better. Yeah. And then those people will come to you. So if if you're serving a pro- if a product that's you stand by and it's a quality product, it doesn't. If they're coming to your food truck, it doesn't matter who's right beside them. It doesn't matter where they were going before. They're coming to see you because that's where they're going. I will say I agree with everything you said except the part about if you're going out to a restaurant, are you going to go to the food truck? You might not go to the food truck, but they are taking up parking maybe that other people. So that I could see where a well, business a owner of, would be. In that same argument, there's a lot of just walk-in business. Because, that, sure. again, talking about the, the, the property manager designing a really great shopping environment, the whole point of putting these buildings strategically next to another mm-hmm. one is that you're getting someone walking from the clothing store by your place. Right. And, then and they're, they're like, like oh, oh, I'm hungry. hungry. I'm going to eat okay. here. So they there is a lot of just walk-in business. So, yeah, you put the food truck in front, then it's like now it's a walk-around business. Well, I was on the other end where when I had a food truck, I didn't want to be in a shopping center. Why do yeah. I want to come sit beside you? Yeah. Like, that's why would I want to compete? That's yeah. 30 degrees outside. I do <laughs> like, and I think it, what makes the most sense uh, is the need, or for the need, is, like, to go into RTP and to go to these, like, offices and businesses. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, like... RTP, I mean, it's a it's a food wasteland right now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if you go in there, like, hey, Swarup, I know you're listening right now. <laughs> totally. But uh, he's a good buddy of ours, and he's, uh, you know, he's in tech, and he's working out there. But it's like, where do you eat? He doesn't have anywhere to go for lunch. Oh, yeah, yeah, where's he going to eat? So No, uh, but not only that, but I love the fact of what food trucks are doing now, and they go to wine shops. So wine shops who don't have a restaurant or a kitchen have special events, and mm-hmm. they pair it. Or they go to certain cocktail bars or beer bars or, or bottle shops and stuff like that. And so there's, there is so much uh, oh, yeah. applicability for food trucks be, besides just parking wherever. There yeah. is. And there's and a lot of the – speaking on the breweries, a lot of the brewer, brewer, brewery owners get upset when we show up and the weather's bad and we don't serve food and we leave. Well, you're not going to pay our bills. Right. But you want us there to make your place look better and more mm. appealing. So you need to find the middle. Like, are you going to pay me to stay? Mm. Or don't get mad because I leave when you have three people sitting there drinking beer. Right. So it that, that's a big battle between the breweries and the food trucks, bet- between the ones who are always good, Bond Brothers. Yeah. They're always packed. Food trucks love to go there. But you want us to come to these other ones, which are good for starting trucks because they're getting their name out there. But you want the popular trucks, but you don't have the people to to support it. And yeah. You bash the food trucks the industry. Like we don't want to come to your brew. Well, you don't have the people to support it. Yeah. So why well, do we want to come? I know. Let, let's talk about that for a second because I know 
the big one that people talk about that gets a crowd is Cousins, right? Yes. If Cousins yeah. is going to a place, they're going to get a following. What are some of the other notable food trucks and that Cousins, people... Cousins, uh, interesting you brought that up. Cousins is like a franchised Correct, food and they truck, were on right? Shark Tank. Yeah, so I, I, for the longest time, thought they were just like a local yeah. food truck, but they're not. They're... Where are they from? They're Maine. From Maine, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, Cousins of Maine. Uh, so yeah, so they're essentially just like a, yeah. a Jersey Mike's, if you will, Correct. that comes into to this area, but they've got a couple of them, and they're always packed. Yeah. 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 And they have a following. Like, I know... Uh, Whatever X bar wine bar in whatever suburb in town will say, oh, we're getting cousins, and then we're like, no, that's going to be a busy night because people know to come to that one. Yeah. And I guess what, like Max, I've asked you before, and you was like, oh, Turbo Turbo, those Chirba guys, are, like those guys are legitimate. What what else are like trucks that actually, if they show up, you know, you're getting business. Um, the Humble Pig is one of them. Yeah. Uh, Q Expresso is really popular. Um, well, the dumb fucking truck was a. Uh, pretty popular for a while. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they were. <laughs> Turned into mofu shops. Yeah, so. Bows, right. the uh, Bows food truck. Okay. They're really popular. Um, so, I mean, I, I think once you build your brand and you build your name, as long as you continue to be consistent, um, being on TV certainly helps. Right. If, right. if we've got a food truck and play in and out on it out here, and drove it around oh probably. Think goodness. about the lines behind it. That would be like, that would be chaos. It's exactly. my new business. Yeah. Exactly. So Put I mean, in and out truck. But they won't. In and out's whole thing is they won't. They won't go they anywhere want, yeah, exactly. where they exactly. have to freeze the product. Right. That well, it has to be drivable from their their <laughs> their reasoning is actually just kind of stupid. They but want to stay on they, the they want to stay on the west coast yeah. and no, and but they, I they talk they, about their sourcing and all that. They they, they source right. locally, but so it has like, to be drivable like within yeah, a couple hours. But you hours. can source locally on the east coast too. It's not like they don't have lettuce. Yeah, yeah but it's not the same <laughs> product coast. though. I mean, yeah, but they're still not getting the same lettuce in there. They have they have food trucks in as far as Texas. Utah, and Arizona. Yeah. I don't think they have. The, in and out has food trucks in Texas. No, not food trucks, but yeah, establishments, b- businesses. Hmm. So their their whole thing is flawed as far as why they don't. Well, go technically, I guess Western Texas, you could probably drive from California there to like I six to eight you, hours. <laughs> they're not getting the same product. When the when this generation of owners leaves it, it to the next generation, you will see you in will and see out all oh, that over. Yes, but that does country. maintain some of their exclusivity, yeah. though. But that kind of it's in the same category as the cousins. It's it. Same thing, in and out If you put an in and out truck out here, you right. park him in, in Bumpuck, Albemarle. Right. And everybody in the world is going to go. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no. Yeah. Let's see. Let, at least in the beginning. Like, Cousins, you get a nice following, a couple hundred people. In and out it would be like the fucking Beatles. <laughs> yes. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yes. obviously, we're talking about on the East Coast, and they don't have them out here, but everyone knows what in and out is. Exactly. Yeah. Because, yeah, they're just so, crazy. So, Cousins, once they hit the Shark Tank and they blew up like that, they're, they're the same way. And I, I don't eat lobster. I don't eat seafood. Yeah, don't make fun of me. No chocolate, chocolate no, no seafood. seafood. And, dude, lie. you're a picky I also guy, heard you man. Don't, you don't do hot food either. No spicy. No, I like spicy food. Oh, well, yeah. Andrew, you got to check your facts, bro. Yeah, check your facts, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Get your shit down. I said to him, too, uh, going back to Andrew, I said, anything else? Because he's going to be on the show, just something to zing. He goes, no, man, I like him. And you know, <laughs> you know, I, I pay him to work out. I don't really want to throw him under the bus anymore. <laughs> he's like, well, Maybe that's why he was like <laughs> scared nuts. about the spicy food. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I like Andrew. Andrew's a good guy. Man. So we touched on marketing for a second. We have your social media manager, Miss Janae Wilkins, here. So you tell us, I mean, first of all, what does uh, social media look like for the Kitchen Archive rally in Durham, and then how? what are some things, tips that you can do for other food trucks to get successful, build your brands? Um, I would say I just took over his social media, so oh, okay. um, kind of getting more acquainted with it, but I just post a lot, and I think the main thing we're trying to do is... Like, like what are the type of things that you post if, you, if I went onto your Instagram or... So we're posting brands um, and then things that are going on at the kitchen. So mm-hmm. like you guys, a lot a lot of people don't really know what goes on at the kitchen archive. They're like, they don't really know like what a commissary is. So in addition to kind of posting the brands or like the members, the tenants, the people that are in the kitchen archive, we also, well, I also post pictures of like a chef prepping or some of the features, some of the amenities, just to kind of get the name out there more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what I would say advice-wise mm-hmm. is just post a lot and, like, be cheeky with your comments. Um, pictures. Yeah, a lot of pictures. Post good pictures. And what I notice most about, like, companies or brands that have really good accounts is that they kind of have a scheme. Like, you're looking at ours. Mm-hmm. So you can see there's kind of like a pattern and it's appealing to the eye. So when you're looking at the whole page, oh, I like the you know, Will and Pops logo. Out. 
Yeah, that's cool. I made that. Yeah, that looks good. You, that, that looks like something Mike Rosado would create. And that's a pretty cool strategy you've got here. You're like literally a logo and then a picture and then a logo and then a picture of all the different. So, yeah, your, your Instagram's pretty yeah. cool. Well, I'll have to give a shout out to uh, Melody Kublios. She's the one who started my Instagram. She okay. did my logo. She did my website. Um, she Melody did Kubios. All of our starting stuff. I think Which is at the Kitchen Archive NC if you're looking for it. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Um, another thing, getting away from social media that I want to touch on, we kind of glanced over it before, but now I'm wondering in terms of your history, uh, being incarcerated for two years, that must have had a, quite the influence on how you go about life now and business and stuff like that. Were you, I'm curious, was there some sort of education business aspect while you were in there or w- what kind of things did you, did it inspire you to do when you got out? Um, well, not go back. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's So when important. you got 780 days just to think about what you did. Yeah. Um, no, it started really young with me. Uh, I, I've i always been an entrepreneur. I've always sold things. I've mm-hmm. always, I'm a good salesman. Mm-hmm. So bacon to a rabbi. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Comb yeah, to a bald man. It, it gave me a bunch of time to, to think about what my next move was. And a lot of people are incarcerated to do that, except for they get out and they don't do that. Right. They, you have all this time to think about it and you put all these processes and procedures in place of what you want to do but if you don't do it it's pointless so i got all these songs in my yeah, head right. <laughs> <laughs> if i could just find the right man right <laughs> so yeah i mean i i've seen lots of people come out and go back which the recidivism rate is quite high it's in the 80s um wow. but i've had some really good friends who got out and did exactly what they said they were going to do and they're doing really well and continue to grow one of them works for me now um but i guess just Depends on the decisions you make. If you decide you want to, it's not fun. Right. There's nothing fun about it. Um, so well, I just know there's a lot of people who've been like, you know, um, like there was that guy who developed the workout for the being basically in a cell, mm-hmm. you know, and he got ripped and like it's you can do it too now, like without having to go to a gym and like those kind <laughs> or of things. Go to jail. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> or go to jail. No, but like and then people who have gotten their degrees while incarcerated and stuff you can like do that. All that. So yeah, mm-hmm. you can do all that. So I was just wondering if there's any if there was any kind of I mean obviously a lot of thinking and a lot of planning, but actually put it into action when you got out. So I don't know if there was like a, a moment that you were like. Yeah, I wrote my notes, and then when I got out, I executed. No, um, so I had the food truck before I went in, okay, and my right. dad ran it while I was gone. Okay. And then when I got out, I just I knew I didn't want to do that again. Yeah. So I had a food truck, and he got in an accident right before I got out, so he couldn't. He shut it down for a couple months, and when I he gave me the keys and said, "Do what you want to with it," and so I basically the next day I was out selling food. Yeah. The day after I got out. And your dad was a mil- in in the military. No. Okay. But you went to a military high school. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Just to give some Get discipline. Me out of yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, it sounds like uh, you had a lot going on, but uh, the business has really helped to focus like all this energy and entrepreneurial spirit. Um, for sure, it keeps me busy, man. It's yeah. Just, as long as I stay busy and I keep my mind focused on this and not getting and hanging out with it. A lot of it comes to who you hang out with, mm-hmm. um, yeah. who you surround yourself with, who you do business with um so i try to keep a very small circle and just focus on what i have to do and keep myself out of trouble yeah nice so on the horizon you've got the new location we just discussed that any ever any thoughts of ever doing food again um no you're not going to open up your other uh, like a brick and mortar restaurant i have people ask all the time if i want to or for that matter like have a a place where, like, right now, your your business is business to business, essentially. Yeah. So would you ever have, like, a front-facing customer no. idea? No. The, the reason in that, I would have 100 restaurants if I had 100 of me. Mm. The reason is the employees, because I'm very hands-on. I'm very, I like things the way to be done right and to be done the way I want them done. Yeah. And if you work for me and I pay you, this is your job, and I expect you to do that job. Yeah. And I expect you to do that job 100% and do it the way I should do it, not the way you want to do it or the way you think it should be done. So the issue with restaurants, man, there's so many hands-on, so many employees. The turnover is incredible. It's my my <laughs> coffee mug from Adam Carolla is, don't do your best, do, do my, my best. That's right. I like that. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, and same with my staff. I don't expect them to reinvent the wheel. I don't expect them. I expect you to do what you're being paid to do. And if you want to do more than that, that's great. We'll pay you for doing more than that. Right. But I expect you to at least do this. Right. Um, so that's my biggest issue with 
wanting restaurants, and I love food, and I love to eat, and I love to cook, but just having to deal with that staff issue, man. I have too many friends in restaurants that... Mm. Well, as we, t- as we spoke about earlier, that seems to be the one the major issue. Because they don't care like you do. If No one's going to care. No one. You can pay them $200,000 a year. They're still not going to care as much as you do because yeah. it's not theirs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the end of the day, they go home and sleep. Now nah, I got my paycheck. I'm good. We but, go home and sleep. Like, damn, what's going on right now? What's at our place? So. Right. And y- your mind is always thinking. Yeah. Well, talking speaking, speaking about somebody who does care is Chris and Glenn from the Triangle Wine Company. That's right. Those guys care a lot about what you're drinking in their business. And they've actually been so successful that they've opened three Triangle Wine Companies and soon to be a fourth. And uh, we got to take a picture, but the sign is up in the Holly Springs location. So oh, I'm looking forward oh, to that. Yeah. We've been talking about that Holly Springs location yeah, forever. for like nine months now. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, yeah, and it's funny. I was just at the the Morrisville location for the first time uh, while I was in RTP, like hanging out because my kid was uh, doing like American Ninja Warrior stuff at like the. It was like a it was a birthday party, and all the kids got dropped off, so they do like this American Ninja Warrior crazy stuff. Oh, cool! And I'm like, oh, I'm like a block away from Triangle Wine Company, so popped in there. It's just so funny. Like you can go. It's not like you just buy food or buy buy wine and beer. You can drink wine and beer there too, like a bar. Yeah. And so I walked in. I was killing some time. I'm like, oh, check this out. Sat at the bar. Guy recognized me. He's like, hey, you're Max from the uh, NCFMB podcast, right? Damn right I am. That's right I am. Celebrity. But uh, <laughs> like, yeah, you you're guys famous. have been sponsoring the show for a while. That you probably should <laughs> probably should know who I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, but I sat at the bar. I had an awesome beer, and then he was like, "You want to try this?" I'm like, "Sure." You want to try that? I'm like, eh, "I gotta go pick up my kid." <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes. So, and then talked to a, a, a lady who is a who is a, a school teacher, and she's giving me all of this dirt about all the drama of being a school teacher. Funny, I always say. Teachers drink way more than sailors. Oh yeah, like, hmm. you want to you want to meet somebody that's at the oh, end of yes. a bottle of wine? They probably are teaching your kids. <laughs> I have teacher friends, so I've been around it. Oh, and teachers drink like fish. Oh yeah, it's interesting. So oh, yeah. if you're a teacher and you like wine, <laughs> go to Triangle Wine Company. There's three locations, so they're right next to school zones. <laughs> and oh, this is the worst. Ad. We were so we're, good before. We were not high fiving ourselves at the end. No. <laughs> Point being, <laughs> people who care about their selection is trying a wine company. Chris and Glenn own them, and they do care about what you have there, what you drink there. They have, some, like you said, some great beer selections. You can sit there, have a beer, sip, and shop at the same time. Plus, they're online. Go to trianglewineco.com for all your beverage, beer, wine, and cocktail bitters, that sort of thing needs. Yeah, well said. Excellent. Uh, well, this has been great. Thank yeah, you man. for coming Thanks on for in. Having it. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in. And yeah, Matt, you got anything else? Well, for all of you looking to start a business in the food truck industry or catering somewhere around the triangle, look up the Kitchen Archive, talk to Will, and uh, you will have a very good business. And the people who eat from those food trucks and catering <laughs> businesses, you will eat and drink very merrily. Yes. Thanks for listening to the NC F&B Podcast. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes and remember, five stars are encouraged.